So today we're going to be talking about types of boundaries, boundary uh, disputes, and then territorial morphology. Instagram, YouTube, and we have uh, Fiveable has a a new platform on uh, a new, I mean, account on Facebook and TikTok. So don't forget to follow us on there at Think Fiveable. And and I don't know if you guys know, but college, if you guys want more um, test practice, for us it's DPQs, but for, for AP Hug, I'm pretty sure you guys have over 20 FRQs to practice. So those will be very helpful, guys. Practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you will get at, at, at it. And, and also don't forget to correct your work. This is how you learn. This is how you learn. If you do the work and just whatever, just like submit it. Or if your teacher actually re requires it, if you just submit your work, you literally don't know. Like you're not learning anything, right? You need to correct your work. And the College Board has specific ways to, for you guys to actually, like for you, the College Board wants you to answer the questions in specific ways. So that will be a good practice for you guys to get to for the test. And the more you do, the better you will get on test. Trust me, practice is key, is key. Okay. So today, we, okay, we're gonna be talking about types of boundaries, but we're also gonna be talking about morphology in the, in the first section. So I didn't include that in the agenda, sorry. And then we're gonna be talking about boundary disputes too. If you have any questions, guys, put them down in the question section. Okay, morphology. So morphology, as most of you guys should be familiar with these terms, you should be familiar with the, uh, about these terms by now. This is from chapter chapter four from politics, I believe. Yeah, it's chapter four from politics. This this whole present this whole uh, section. So we uh, morphology is basically the shape of states, and depending on how depending on that shape of the state, there can be some advantages for that shape or it can create disadvantages and conflict within within the state itself. So we're gonna cover the basic, like the, the shapes, and we will talk about the conflicts or the disadvantages these examples will, these shapes will give, right? So the first example is elongated shape, which basically means like just a long and narrow shaped border of, of, of a country, right? And like ideal example of that, as many of you guys know, is Chile. And it can be elongated vertically like Chile and it can be uh, elongated horizontally like in Gam Gambia, in the bottom example. And for elongated, I would say there's no, I mean, if we can, can you guys think of an advantage for elongated shape, elongated shape state? The only thing I can think of is there are like multiple uh, things, climate, climates that can exist within the, within, okay, coastal, coastal coast. Yeah, yeah, if it's, yeah, but it's not, yeah, in this, in this case, that's right. In the case of, of Chile, that's right. But Gambia, no, because it's, lo it's lo landlocked from the other sides. So, yeah, a lot of reasons. That's right, because it's covering a lot of land, so it can, there can have there the there can be a lot of resources within that land, and I would say different climates that can be maybe an advantage. I, I don't know, like just for the people living in there. So, gotta ice cream my mask. Okay, so some conflict that can obviously create this this, uh, this unity, right? People are not going to be feel, feel, feeling really connected. Like if you look at the south and the north in Chile, for example, or the east and the west, the west portion of Gambia, people are not going to really feel connected because there's so much distance, right? And even the distribution of resources can be not like not equal or not uh, equally distributed throughout the country. Maybe, in, uh, do you guys know what? Usually, usually resources are distributed around the, like the capitals, like the the capital of the 
country or like the second largest city in the country so we can see we can see that 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 lack of resources ha uh, happening in the in, in elongated shapes states and uh, also it's uh, longer borders obviously will equal uh, it, it, it will result in a harder in a harder like uh, way to defend the borders right because if you have longer borders you're gonna have to have more military more soldiers more equipments during war and stuff like that but like for example of chile that doesn't really apply do you guys know what's what's surrounding the borders of chile there's geographical feature that surrounds the border of chile do you guys know what it is yeah the the the, the indian mountains yeah that's right that is right. Good job, guys. We'll move on. Fragmented. We're gonna have to move on kind of, I think, faster today because there's a lot to cover, to cover. But we'll stop if you guys have any questions. But this is like, this should be, the, honestly, this presentation is a lot of vocabulary. And, and obviously, like, Epi Hug is a lot of vocabulary, right? You guys know by now. So if you guys are just familiar with the vocab word, what does it mean? Most of them are self explanatory, right? Most of them you actually can guess what it is based on what the, the word itself but you should be able to be familiar with the with the word like the morphology the the name of the shape of the state and then maybe get some couple of examples be able to remember a couple of examples to write during a practice right so fragmented fragmented basically is made is when a state has several discontinuous pieces right it's not the discontinuous pieces are not really connected to the main mainland. So an example of that will be China. I know it's not really. I I I didn't know that China is is discontinuous. But this northern, if you guys look at the map, the uh, eastern north, the north, the eastmost like tip right of 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 uh, of India is kind of disconnected from India. It's it's. This, this land is being disputed by Bangladesh and India has a lot of Muslim majority in there but that land is not really connected to the mainland if you see it, it's kind of like it's kind of out there it's not really connected to the mainland and another example and another example is Angolia Yeah, so it has it has a a kind of like a land, Cam, 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 Benita, the land that's part of the home, part of the country, but it's not really connected by it in any form. So this can cause this can cause problem over controlling the region, right? If the land is not is if, if that piece of land is in another country it's going to be very hard for the country to be sovereign over that land because it's like it's physically not connected right it's going to be harder for the country for the government to control it because it's it's far it's 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 in another sovereign country and that is the example it's congo right it's in, in congo and do you guys know what what a uh, term we use what term we use when there is a there is there is like for uh, what term and we use when there's like a sovereign state within another sovereign state. Well, what what do we call that that sovereign state? The small sovereign state that's encompassed by the larger state. Do you guys know what this is called? There's a vocabulary word I can say. Enclosed. It's it's very close to enclosed, but it's not enclosed. No, perforated is not. That's not. For sure, perforated. We'll talk about perforated. Perforated is the large. Perforated is basically the larger state that encompasses the smaller state. Yeah, it's in in clip. That's right, Sarah. Sarah, um, it is. So perforated is the larger state that encompasses the the enclave, the smaller state. That's the smaller state inside the larger state. This is. A, it's 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 fine. This is this question is, this like th this vocabulary is perforated and enclave gets confused a lot. Okay, so pref yeah, ooh, pref is next. So yeah, so a state that encompasses another state. That's the the basic definition that we can come up with that will not really confuse us. 
and you can just think of a state with a hole like if that's like the the, the last thing or or like if you guys think of like no notebook papers right the notebooks right they would have perforated endings to it like holes so you can tear them that would be another thing another way to remember the word and lesotho lesotho and switzerland in south africa are not are not the perforated states they are the enclaves in south africa south africa itself is the is the perforated state it's, it's, it's the perforated state because it has these two holes in them right the south africa is not the government of South, Af South Africa is not sovereign over these two states. These two enclaves are self, they basically govern themselves, right? They have their own rules, they have their own uh, their own laws. Obviously, they're going to be kind of affected because they're landlocked. If you see it, it's landlocked, right? It cannot access any kind of resources. So it might be kind of have to like be uh, under the control of the South African government but that's another another thing right talking about politics in this okay so pro corrupted corrupted is shape shape is when there is a long extension of land from the state usually the corruption happens because of the need to access for resources right so resources like water well what water natural resources so an example of that will be um sorry okay an example of that would be uh the democratic democratic republic of congo in the map is uh, to the bottom left of the of the screen and we see the corruption right do you see the do you see sorry do you see the left corruption there the the corruption to the left to the east side of the side of the of the borders of the country right this is due this corruption allows the democratic Republic of Congo to access right water from the Atlantic Ocean right that can result in trade just accessing water is important right in many form in for many reasons and then Nimbia here in um, southern Africa we see another another extension to the west to western to the western part of the border and this is another example of corrupt corrupted state and this can be this this shape can be an advantage and disadvantage right we talked about how it allows countries to access resources while also it will create problem over governing right if that corrupted piece will be harder to to govern by the by the government and also the there might be like the the people themselves might not be connected that much to the main people in the mainland because they're not like physically right they're not physically connected they're not physically connected to the the rest of the country so now we're going to be talking about boundaries oh that's good we're only like 15 minutes in we're done with third of the talk content before we start borders is there any questions you guys have Any questions, guys? No questions, guys?
we will let me see we will talk about boundary disputes in after talking about defining boundaries we'll talk about we will talk about different different boundary disputes like after talking about here about boundaries but do you guys have any questions about the previous stuff the morphology part if not, we can move, move on. Okay, so we'll move on. So, uh, oh, one question. Okay. So, what countries, historical events, should I prioritize for the exam? Honestly, like this is a very generic question. Oh, the question went away. Where is it? Okay, it's a very generic question, so I can't really answer it in detail. But because human geography basically covers like a lot of like it covers basically we're talking about basically about every like most cultures the most political disputes on like the globe as a whole. So I can't really see what countries or like you can prior prioritize. But for historical events, I would say like understanding colon colonialism, right? Which you guys have have covered it, right? I'm pretty sure you guys have covered it. Like over Africa, which we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about that a little bit today. We're gonna be talking about colon colonialism. We're gonna be talking imperialism, obviously not colonialism, but understanding how that, if those two events, like those huge two events, right? Colonialism, imperialism, how they have shaped today's world, like today's map, especially of Africa. Today we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about Africa a little bit. I would say these two events, but I can't really like, I can't really say, like I can't, I can't really answer the question fully, but yeah, that's I think the best answer I can give. Countries, let's see, countries maybe super like the superpowers. If we're talking about like the superpowers, how their policies or they or how they have affected affected the politics of the modern world or the geography of the modern world. Again, we go back to Africa and the how. It was divided by European powers in the in the what, 19th century. Okay, we'll move on and we will we'll cover a little bit of that today, hopefully. So yeah, defining boundaries. Boundary. Oh, where is the? Okay. Okay, so boundary is basically the definition of boundary. Boundary is an invisible. Boundary is an invisible barrier or line that separate one state from another. Purpose usually is to establish sovereignty. If we're talking about states, right? So this, the 50 states within the US, right? The, those have, right? Those have different boundaries and each state, right? We have federal laws and we have state laws, right? And each state has different, each state basically is sovereign, right? It's not connected to the other states, right? So each state is, Kind of independent even though we all have to follow each state has to follow federal federal laws right but each state can make its own laws right based on the le legislations right and then here palestine versus israel this is another example of a border right israel there is a lot of dispute over that land and this is another, another example of the purpose of drawing that land is to establish sovereignty over or control over that land. Why is combat? Ah, oh, I'm very sorry, guys. We we forgot to cover convex shape. Okay, I'm very sorry, but this is okay. We'll cover it and then we'll go back to boundaries. I'm very sorry. The slides are a little, little bit off order. Okay. So basically, it's a it's a round shaped state, and this is basically the like the the ideal shape of a state. I would say because it allows for different like it, it allows for di uh, different like advantages. I would say if the state is like rounded, right? There's no any projections or 
corruptions access to resources will be will be will be kind of equal in the example of kenya kenya is a very poor country right because we can't really apply that apply those advantages to the country unfortunately but we can see the shape shape of kenya is a com a compact shape right it's rounded there's no projections it's for the most part it's rounded and it's sent like there's a like you know what i mean right and then government 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 control will be easier because of the rounded or, or because of the borders are not really far apart and nationalism so it would increase nationalism because people will be physically more connected to each other physically more connected to each other because they're living like next to each other there's no like distance and even climate climate for the climate will be climate will be i would say the same for the most part because it's so like it's it's so together and the border the people are so the border i mean it just depends on how the how big the country is right the the area of the country so so yeah so types now we're going to be talking about band, boundaries going back to boundaries so we have three type of boundaries we have cultural boundaries we have geometric boundaries and we have physical boundaries we're going to be covering i think we're going to be focusing mostly on cultural boundaries for the example so we'll see so cultural boundaries basically divide ethnicities, right? Ethnicities, languages, and religions. A great example of that is uh, uh, is Ireland and Northern Ireland. I want you guys to tell me what is what is this culture division? What kind of culture division does exist from exist between Ireland and Northern Ireland? Do you guys know? It's a cultural, so that's a hint. It's a, it's a cultural, a cultural division. Yes, right, Nicole. So yeah, that's right. So Northern Ireland is mostly Protestants, right? And Southern, Southern, Southern Ireland is mostly Catholics. And you can, I mean, I know, like right now we're in the twenty first century, right? Like these should not be divisions. Those divisions were were occurred after the protestant reformation in the what in the 15th century and then they still exist until today like we don't really we don't really talk we don't really like to talk about religion as a division because it's a, it is it, obviously the religion is a division factor between nations but but like talking about allies it's kind of it's a very advanced advanced like developed country but it, the, these the, these divisions still are seen right in the like in the demographics of the people living in there. We still seen that Protestants are kind of isolated up there, and Catholics don't really interact but like interacting with you know with Protestants. Same thing, same thing with Protestants. So that's interesting to see. And then India is another example. I'm giving examples. I want you guys to tell me what are what, what are these kind of divisions. So what is the what is the division that exists in India? Or I'm talking about the cultural division, right? What is the cultural division that exists in India? Hindus are Muslim, right, Sarah? That's right. Hindus are Muslim. So in um, um, in Pak right, Pakistan, Pakistan and India used to be one country, right? D uh, during during the during imperialism when england right had control over the whole land when india got its dependence right it kind of like these two like muslims and hindus became kind of isolated so H india became india now has a majority of hindus and a minority of muslims while pakistan has a minority of hindus and a majority of, of muslims so basically there was a lot of migration going in and out from pakistan than in India, when the when when the when the borders of India were established, to account for the Muslims and the Hindus. So if there were a lot of if there were Muslims living in India, they would migrate to Pakistan because of the majority of Muslims in Pakistan. And 
Oh, I don't. Okay, no, never mind. And um, do you guys know what this map is of of what? It's an island in very close to Turkey. It starts with a C. You guys, it's it's a, it's a great example actually of like all of these all of these eth ethnic ethnic division cultural divisions. What is Cyprus? Yes, it is Cyprus. Okay, so basically, the northern part is controlled by the Turkish by the Turkish by the Tur Turkish government, and the southern part is controlled by Greece. And we see that there is a buffer zone actually. If you see the the border between them is a buffer zone between between them buffer zone what are buffer zo zones guys it's another vocabulary word what's a what is a buffer zone what is a buffer zone let's go what's a buffer zone no idea okay Daily, it's a no. I would. It's an area. Yeah, it's an area between two separate. What does it really do? Like, what? What's its purpose? Okay. So buffer zones are basically zones that are not controlled by anybody. There is no really sovereign country that that claims control over that land. And the reason, like for example, for here, right? It's a buffer zone. The reason for that is to create is to decrease the issue with these two nations, right? If they're not so close to each other, they're not. They're not gonna like. I don't know, like kill each other, right? Or go into contact with each other, right? Because they're not, there's a land that separates them. So that's an exact, that's the buffer zone. And make sure to know that for the sense, buffer zones are very, are very like important to know. And okay, so we're talking about Turkey, right? The northern part of Cyprus is controlled by Turkey and the southern contro controlled by Greece. And we see here, there is like a ethnic division, right? Ethnic division, we see a language division, right? The northern speaks. I would say it speaks Turkish, right? Because controlled by the Turkish government, and the and the southern controlled by Greece, the they don't speak Turkish, right? Obviously, and their religions too. Turkish Turkish tend to be or, or have a majority of Muslims, and southern Greece, I would say they're Christians. Geometric boundary. We have one question. Okay, let's see the question. Is the boundary between India and Pakistan antecedent or consequent? What about the boundary between the UK and Republic of Ireland? Okay, we're gonna be covering. Okay, I don't wanna. I don't wanna answer that question right now because we can, we're gonna be cover covering the the different boundaries. Like we're gonna be covering it in the next slide. So I'm not gonna answer the question right now because we're gonna go off. It's not off topic, obviously, but I I don't wanna review something and then go back to review it again. Okay. Okay, so geometric boundaries, geometric boundaries are basically like are drawn based on based on um, the parallel lines of latitude. So it's a straight line that serves a political boundary that is unrelated to a physical or a cultural difference. For the most part, it's unrelated. So some examples we see the division between South Korea and North Korea. We see the 38th parallel of latitude, right? That divides these two nations, right? So it's an example of geometric boundary because it's based on the latitudes, right? The par par based on the parallel latitudes, and it also divides two sovereign nations. We have this is like a the ideal example of a geometric boundary because we're so familiar with it. The 48th parallel of the divide line that divides the United States with Canada. And Canada, sorry. And then we have Chad too. It's also divided by a like a kind of straight parallel land latitude line. Okay, so physical boundaries, those those are the boundaries that are that exist because of because of geographic features, right? Because of deserts, mountains, oceans, cliffs. Can you guys come up? 
can you guys give me some examples of uh, the physical boundaries before before showing up the examples we have what are some physical boundaries or what are some countries that exist in physical boundary what are some yeah what are some sovereign states that have that are surrounded by physical boundaries chile yeah this is like an ideal example right chile Another example? Yeah, Pacific Ocean, that's right. Pacific Ocean can be, it can be, uh, but it's not a, well, depending. Well, yeah, it, it, can, it can be a border. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a valid answer. Yeah, I, that's why I was thinking. Yeah, I would say it's do cap because there are boundaries, right? They're, surrounded by water by water right oceans right but it is it is a boundary itself right because they're located inside like in the middle of ocean oh they do count i would say they count yeah they count as as physical boundaries i believe france too france has a a mountain right a mountain is it northern where, where, I'm not. I don't remember honestly, but I know France has a, phys a physical mon like a mountain that divides it with. Is it Germany? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know what what like what side of France it is. Okay, whatever it is, <laughs> we'll move on. It's it's good to know just a couple couple of ones. You don't need to know more than I would say more than two. You don't need to know. Okay, now we're going to be talking about creation of boundaries. This is the question Sarah was talking about. Uh, so there are different examples. I have, we have like five examples. We don't have that much time left, so we'll cover them pretty quickly. And then we'll talk about questions if you guys have anything at the end. So um, antecedent boundaries are boundaries that exist before cultural landscape. Before cultural landscape. So these exist usually because of the physical uh, because of the physical features of the land they're not they're not really dependent on who occupies the land or what kind of religion lives in a land obviously right like culture modifies the physical features but these are boundaries that exist because of because of the because of just because of physical features, not because of culture itself. So, so we're going, we're always going back to Chile, right? Chile and the Andes Mountains are a great example of that, right? They have, they've always been dividing the Bolivia. I mean, uh, they've always been dividing Bolivia and Argentina from Chile, right? They've always been dividing them. So it's not based on culture, right? But people migrated there and they lived in there but it's not based on culture because it's just a future it's always have been there what was sarah if you if you don't mind can you type your question again because i don't remember what it was i didn't read it so i pressed answer so it disappeared maybe we can go back to it let me see okay let's how about okay we'll move we'll review this and we will, we'll go back to the questions so we don't waste all the time okay so relic boundaries relic boundaries are boundaries that exist because of their meaning like because of the meaning they have it's not they know but they no longer exist they just they're just attached to the what does it say a relic boundary is one that no longer functions so it doesn't really exist but it is its meaning still exists right its meaning is still there ceiling is still there so berlin wall is a great example of that it's a great example of that right it was built by the soviet union in berlin right okay so basically if you got if, i'm pretty sure you guys know the history i don't you guys should be able to know the well to explain it you have to kind of know right the history okay so uh after world war one right world war two right world war two not world war one world war II. Yeah, World War II. Um, basically, Germany was divided into like these four sections. French sector, we have the British sector. 
and then the American sector, sector, and then we have the Soviet Union sector. So, but the whole thing is that is Berlin was in the middle, right? The Berlin state was in the middle of all these sectors. The Soviet Union decided to create a wall to separate their eastern side from the western side influence, right? So it was the wall was built in 1961 by the Soviet Union, East Germany, right? While the wall was largely just dis so so the wall disappeared in in 1986, but there's still some remnants. There's still some remnants of it, and still some remnants in it, and some some parts of it still exist. I think until today, but it's not that it exists or not exists anymore. But it's the effect, the cultural, like it's a symbol, right? The symbol of suppression, right? The symbol of people, the suffering that happened between these two walls, the people that suffered in the East, in the Eastern part of the wall, and the, it's a, it's the meaning that the wall get, leaves behind. It's not really the wall itself of it exists or not exists. And there are some physical remnants of it, and there is some, like, symbolic remnants to, 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 to the wall. So yeah, so superimposed imposed boundaries are Another example of superimposed boundaries, these are boundaries that are kind of forced by other nations. So we have boundaries that are drawn on an area by a conquering or colonizing country that ignores existing cultural patterns. Sorry. And again, Africa, the scramble for Africa. This is a great example of that, right? Sorry. Okay. So this is where in the in the in the 19th century i believe right so uh, superpowers european su european superpowers came together during imperialism right and they basically decided to divide af af divide africa into different con different different regions and to basically occupy them right call uh, and get control over that land but they basically did not really account for the difference because they are, Africa is ethnically so diverse. It's very diverse. They speak so many languages in there, so many languages, so many different ethnicities with so many different backgrounds. So when you put all these eth ethnic people together that are so different, conflict is going to occur. Conflict for sure is going to occur. And that's what we see in the history of Africa, right? So whatever Africa just, the scramble of Africa is just a great example of superimposed boundaries. I don't think we can find a better example of superimposed than the scramble of Africa because it's so massive and it's it's it's, it's true. And then uh, subsequent boundaries. Subsequent boundaries are established after the settlement in an area, and it changes as culture changes. So this is basically the opposite of uh, antecedent boundaries it's basically the opposite this is based on culture based on culture and the people the language the religion culture language religion ethnicities that exist in a region so yugoslavia is an example of that after the yugoslavia was basically one right one land it was i think controlled by the Soviet, right i think it was controlled by the Soviets. and after it kind of got its independence or like the balkanization. What's the balkanization, guys? Tell me what balkanization is. Balkanization is a vocab word. What's balkanization? Balkanization of Yugoslavia. What's what's balkanization? Breaking apart. Be more specific. Separation of a state. Yeah, more specific. Based on what? Separation of state. Based on what? I would not say independence. Yeah, so separation of state based on ethnicities, right? So when separation of state based on ethnicities, yeah, that's the definition. Basically, Yugoslavia separated, if you guys see, you compare compare two maps, right? The one on the left and the, on, on the right. We see after it was balkanized on the right, we see these these different borders that, call, you, you can say subsequent borders, right, that were established like between Serbia, right, and Bosnians, right? Serbians and Bosnians, they have different religions, right? Different religions, different, they speak different languages, Croatians and Slovenians, or two, right? They're ethnically different. They're ethnically different people that speak different languages, and most of them practice different religions. So that's how, 
that's how the map of Europe kind of was shaped after the balkanization that part of the world that part of Europe was shaped after the balkanization of Yugoslavia and this honestly is a good type of boundary because it prevents conflict if you have people that are the same you're not even going to have conflict over because there's not nothing really that they can disagree on like religion is a big factor that can cause conflict honestly and uh, language too right if people really can't communicate with each other yeah so those are subsequent it's based on culture you know that subsequent is based on based on culture 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 and then i think this i think i was talking okay so i think this is uh, i think i put this on okay so i put this on because most of european european um Boundaries can account for subsequent boundaries, okay? Because they're ethnically different. People living in Europe, France, are very different than Germany, right? The people living in France, French are so many, so much different than Germans, right? They speak different language. They practice the same, the same. They practice the same religion, but I, I believe France are Catholic, majority of Catholics, while Germany is more Protestant. And they speak different languages and i think i think yeah we were talking about the ge geographic um physical boundaries france and germany i think are are, are separated by mount by a mountain is it i no, no 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 never mind never mind never mind sorry 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 france and spain spain are separated by a, phys a physical mountain that makes a border between france and spain so yeah and many of these European countries are redrawn. Most of these, most of like in the in the during the Inquisition, like very let's see, in the fourteen in the fifteenth century, Spain and Portugal used to be one land, one kingdom, and then they separated. They separated. Even Germany, the boundaries of Germany are not the same ones that existed a century ago. So consequent boundaries, consequent boundaries are consequent boundaries are drawn in order to separate a group based on ethnic, linguistic, religious, and economic differences. Okay, so an example of that. So it's all, consequent is are also gonna be separating are gonna be separations between cultures, but. The difference between consequent and subsequent is that consequent are kind of imposed by, are kind of like, yeah, are kind of like imposed by the features of the of the land, the features of the land. So we see India, right? India before the partition, when it was part of the England, part of England, where it was controlled by England, and then after the partition, right? After the partition, we see we see the the Pakistan, right? Pakistan, country of Pakistan coming, gaining independence. And I believe that there is a separation, right? There's a physical separation. There is a, I'm not quite sure. I think it's a mountain that separates India with Pakistan. And this is, this is, this is another example of where these two nations, Pakistan and India are separated culturally by religion, religion, and then physically by a, by a physical feature. Oh, it's 45 already. Okay, we will move on and then we will go to the questions really fast. So, um, so what is a frontier? Are frontier and buffer zones the same thing? No, let's see. So, frontiers are basically... No, 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 I don't, okay, no, no, no. Because I don't think frontiers serve the same purpose as buffer zones. Frontiers are basically when there's no really direct control over an area. Like there is no purpose where people would want to control that area. Like Antarctica, right? The Antarctica, Antarctica is basically a desert. There, like there's no reason why somebody would really want to control it, right? Have a military bases in there. And then prior to 1912, the U.S. West was also, a, can be counted as a frontier because there was no really, like, 
kind of uh, sovereign, like it wasn't really controlled by anybody. Whoever could, whatever farmer could come in there and then occupy the land, it would be theirs. And then the frontier between the Arabian Peninsula, I think this is a great example because the frontier between Oman, the yeah, Saudi Saudi Arabia, and then United Arab Emirates, I think that land is a desert. So there is really no control over that land. I, I'm pretty sure that the land is there is a desert. That's why it's not controlled. It's not controlled by anybody. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah, I was thinking of that too. It's more, more separating, like there's a purpose to it, but buffer frontiers are just like lands that are also not controlled by any anybody. But okay, now we're going to be talking about boundary disputes really fast. I'm very sorry, guys. We were supposed to. Oh, we have a line of C2. Okay, we will cover that. It's okay. We will, we will go over it now. It's okay. So uh, we'll talk about. Uh, boundary disputes and some examples of uh, the land, uh, law of the sea disputes. So definitional disputes, those are, okay, those are also definitions, right? You also have to understand the definitions of these disputes. So definitional disputes, basically countries that do not agree on the original intended boundary, right? right? I, I would say ex example of that would be uh, Israel and Palestine versus Palestine, right? Because of um, the only, Donism, Donism, right? Donism, right? Because of Donism, the Israel kind of got us got uh, the Jewish population got a state in Israel in current day Israel, but there were already Muslim Arab population living in that area. So Muslims and Jewish people in there are kind of are are kind of in conflict because of, it's, it's it's kind of a definitional dispute because they don't really agree on like the Arab and they don't agree that Jewish people are coming and and occupying the land. On the other hand, the Jewish people kind of, that was their, like their very long, very old land of their fathers. So that's that's the definition, defin, de, definitional dispute. Locational dip, dip, dispute is caused by shifting the original boundary. So this Mississippi River is an example of that. Some part of the Mississippi kind of, some people in Mississippi see themselves as Louisiana because the Mississippi River kind of shifts over time. An operational boundary is major issues caused in public boundary. So border crossing, border crossing between the states, the U.S. states, and Mexico is an operational boundary. It's not. It's a. It's it's a dispute over boundary, right? Who's who's able to cross? When are they able to cross? Why are they crossing? All this all this drama, right, going on from the from from the U.S. and the Mexico, right, between the U.S. and Mexico. An allocational dispute over what is on, what is dispute over the use of what is on or what is in the boundary so national natural resources disputes over fishing rights right we're going to be talking about land um law of seas we will go over the what is boundary between the u.s what is boundary i don't know when that question was but i think it was prior prior to the to the prior to the with the presentation so it would be an operational boundary dispute and what type of boundary like you mean land let's go back to this and see wait Okay, so the U.S. and the Mexico are they're separated by. It's not a relic boundary, right? It's not superimposed boundary. You can say sub superimposed boundary because of because of the because that land was basically California, for example, was covered by Spanish, but they were kicked off kicked off the land by your Europeans occupying the northern side. So you can it's not by I don't say super. I would say sequent because there's so much difference right in ethnicities and culture and language between mexico and the u.s but i don't use don't use the u.s example it's not an ideal example of that it's not an ideal example of that you have to get like solid examples yugoslavia is a great example of subsequent boundary but i won't really give them i don't know i don't really like answering that question that much because it's not a solid answer okay so second question can this 
be within a larger state like Spain with Catalonia or does it only divide independent countries? I'm believing you are talking about the, the different boundaries, right? So no, it does not have to be within independent countries. It can be with, with in a, a within a sovereign state and Catalonia is a great example of that they actually want to get their independence right and I believe they're also separated they're culturally like they're sub they're culturally uh, culturally separated from the rest rest of the Spanish people so it's subsequent boundary and I believe also they're separated by a mountain I'm not sure guys correct me if I'm wrong but I think that northern part is no I don't think it's I don't know guys is, am I right am I right there is there like a mountain that separates the Catalonia part from the rest of Spain. So if there was a mountain, it would also be another example of uh, another example of consequent because they're culturally separated by all, but also it's separated by by a physical feature. Let's move on. So land of the sea. So land of the sea basically defines or makes 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 it lawful for a country to fish or extract fresh national resources away from their coast so there are like four sections we have the internal waters this is where like all all the landlord side like, this is where like the country has complete control over the land they're just like it's internal waters it's their water so they have complete control over it 12 miles away from the internal internal waters we have territorial land Territorial waters where where states have the right to control who can pass through that land because they're so close to them. And contagious zone is is where the country has the right to impose laws that can regulate population and immigration, right? Who can come that close to the land so that so that um they can, I don't know, migrate through through land or pollutions who can throw in trash and pollutants inside that land because they're so close. If they throw pol really serious pollutions, they can really affect the, the, the homeland. And then we have the the part where everybody fights for, the EEZ zone, exclusive economic zone. That's where fishing and natural resources rights Come, come, come in into place, and you have international water, waters where no state has has control over. We have one question. We're going over an hour, guys. Can you share the Earl slideshow? Okay, so yeah, so the slideshows will be the slideshows will the link for the slideshows will be up on Fiveable the website. If you go back to the replays, uh, like a couple of hours after I finish after we finish we finish with the presentation so yes i will share the link okay so this is i believe this is the last slide okay and then the, we have the law of the sea disputes which this is like the like major dispute right it's still going on i believe yeah and it's still going on what do you mean it's still going on it's the south china sea it's basically um it's basically a dispute between like five countries over the land over the land over there over the land of over the sea and fishing right right so this land is very 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 rich in resources it has 10 percent of the world's fish fisheries it has 11 uh, these are estimates obviously 11 billion barrels of oil and 190 trillion feet of natural gas so it's a big economic gain whoever controls gains controls over the land gets all these resources and five countries fight over that land china taiwan indonesia Mal uh, malaysia philippines and vietnam and basically china right now is because the most powerful country over there is basically claiming the land it's kind, it's kind of not acknowledging any of the other countries claiming the land and one thing there's this uh spar sparkly islands in in the land where they're basically like small islands but china so whoever controls the islands will basically control the sea right because they will expand their ease e zone right exclusive uh, economic zone so they will be able to gain those resources right extract those resources so china basically is claiming those lands and she, they're basically 
uh, sending military forces to conquer kind of or get control of each each land each island so they can and china is also doing a reclaiming like land reclaiming or they would send like big ships and they would jump in sand to create to create islands inside the ocean to create islands and to ex extend their eee zone again exclusive economic zone and this kind of has created a tension between the u.s and the the U.S. and China, because the U.S. kind of sent in their navy military to stop China from doing that, and there's a lot of like the U.S. kind of using its power to impose like laws of international waters, more laws, and the U.N. is kind of involved also. The U.S. putting pressure on the U U.N. to stop China from doing that, and it's getting a lot of tensions between between the, the two countries. And because they're both of them are so powerful. So we are it's not that bad. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Don't forget to study for the test. And you got this. You got this. And don't forget to use the research that the college board provides. Practice the cues. Do like two every day. That's not bad. And correct them and see how you how you do. So yeah. Have a nice day. And bye. See you next week.